In our shop is a 2002 Buick LeSabre with a 3.8 liter VIN K engine and nearly 64,000 miles on it. The owner is concerned that the idle seems to be too high and when he shifts from park to reverse, the transmission is slamming into gear. He is concerned this might eventually do transmission damage. While bringing the vehicle into the shop, it was obvious the engine idle was too high and our scan tool confirmed our feelings. We first checked for any codes pending, present, or in history and found none. We then checked the idle air control onboard diagnostics parameter ID or PIT. The IAC was reading a position of 79, which means the Pinto is fully extended. Look at that. This means the computer is trying to shut off the air that is bypassing the throttle plate to keep the idle speed normal. But look at the idle speed in drive is hovering around 1800 RPM. This is way too high. The most common causes for this problem on this vehicle are a defective IEC motor, vacuum leak, a defective computer, or a wiring issue. But before we get into the diagnostics, let's take a quick look at how the IAC functions on this vehicle. Okay, behind me is a wiring diagram for an IAC motor, like the one on this vehicle. In the center is the stepper motor, and along each side of the motor is a winding of very thin copper wire. At the bottom is the PCM, or powertrain control module, which controls the IAC movements. Inside the PCM, there are four transistors. Look closely at the switches. Notice each one can be connected to either power or ground. When the PCM turns the switch to power, current then flows from that switch through the winding wire and then to ground. Remember this, whenever current passes through a wire, a magnetic field is created around that wire. The stepper motor is actually a series of opposing magnets placed tightly together in a round piece of steel. To show this, we have a piece of magnetic field viewing film and when the motor is held to it, you can see it displays the opposing magnets. This is an eight step motor because it has eight different magnets in it. It will take eight steps to turn the motor one complete turn. When the current has passed through one of the windings, the magnetic field created will cause the motor to turn one step. Okay, now that we have an understanding of how the IAC motor operates, let's take a look at how it controls idle speed. Behind me is a diagram representing the airflow into the engine during cruising speed. Notice the throttle plate is open, allowing filtered air to pass into the intake manifold and then to the engine. Also notice the IAC Pinto is completely sealing off all airflow. When a throttle plate closes, the air passage to the engine is also closed off. Without any air intake, the engine will die. As the throttle closes, the IAC Pinto opens to regulate the air passage around the throttle plate to keep the engine running. It will continue to regulate the air by passing the throttle for as long as the throttle is closed. This is particularly important when loads change on the engine. For example, when the steering wheel is turned or the air conditioning is turned on, the load on the engine is increased and more air is allowed to pass to keep the engine from dying due to added stress. Now that we know how it works, we're going to test the circuit. Disconnect the IAC connector and start the engine. Connect either a test light or power probe to battery positive and touch each of the four terminals with the probe end while revving the engine. When you do this, the light should flash. The computer is switching each of the circuits from power to ground in an attempt to adjust the IAC pentel. This is why the light must flash. If the light does not flash on one or more of the terminals, either there is a wiring issue or the computer itself is defective and needs to be replaced. As you can see, 
on this vehicle, the computer is working properly. Our next step was to remove the IAC and check for any carbon buildup. If carbon is built up on the pintle end or seat, the airflow may not be able to close off, causing the idle to stay high. This is a close-up view of the IAC pintle. As you can see, the seat area does have a carbon buildup around it. To view the IAC cavity in this throttle body, we are using a mirror and reflected light. Okay, stop the shot right here. Here you can see the real problem is the carbon buildup around the pinto seating area. This area needs to be cleaned to ensure the pinto is capable of restricting all airflow around the throttle plate. We clean the IAC cavity in the throttle body and replace the IAC motor. And now the idle is back to normal. Also notice the IAC position counts on the scan tool. This is a normal reading for this vehicle. When you have a high idle problem, the two most common causes are an IAC or a vacuum leak issue. But these are not the only causes for a high idle problem. The throttle cable may be sticking, the throttle plate might not be closing completely, the floor mat might be frozen, pushing on the accelerator pedal. Heck, I've even run into situations where the power steering pressure sensor was defective and the computer was holding a high idle to compensate for the added stress on the engine it thought was occurring. When you run into a vehicle electronics problem, give us a call on our toll-free assistance line. We are always happy to help. Well, that's it for today. We'll see you again next time in the Wells Tech Garage.